My shit was muted. What I said was, I just pressed the record button. So you know what that means. Let's get it, man. We live for active. Let's get it, man. Like I said, it was your first time here. Hit the subscribe button. Your second time here. Hit the like button. Your third time here. Drop that joint. And today we're back with part three to the one video. Boy thought he saw a ghost. The truth was much worse. You know what I mean, so there's three stories in this joint that have nothing to do with the title. We already did the middle video, which has to do with the title. But this is number one. We're about to see what it's talking about. Hope y'all having a great day. I'm having a great day. I got my swatter. I got something to relax me. Other than that, let's get straight into the video. Put down. Number one, thorns. In 2012, a 22-year-old woman named Simone was living in a small winemaking village called Rudesam Am Rhein, which is located in southwest. Hopefully, I said that right. What is that? Where did it say that? Germany? Yo, I'm trying. I'm not even gonna catch. Yo, I'm trying. Well, I'm pretty sure everybody is. But when I get the money, or when I get the time, I don't even know. I think it's just just money for real. I'm trying to go explore the world and see the beauties, like. Eastern Germany. This village is strikingly beautiful. It's full of quaint European homes, and there's lots of rolling green hills with vineyards as far as the eye can see, and the village sits right on the banks of the Rhine River. Simone had grown up in this picturesque village, and she had loved it, but this was going to be her last summer before she left and headed off to New York City to start the next New chapter. Of her life. And while she was excited about that, she was also kind of sad because this village and everybody inside it of it were the only things she had ever known and so the idea of leaving them behind just seemed very strange to her but instead of focusing on the kind of growing anxiety around her imminent departure from germany she focused on what she would be doing that summer while she was still in germany some of simone's fondest memories of her childhood were of her time spent at summer camp and the summer camp was located in this forest that was not far from her village and every summer in july simone along with about two 200 other kids from her village and from neighboring villages would converge on the campgrounds in the forest for two weeks of playing games and going That's on scavenger tough. hunts and putting on especially stage plays and just generally having a really Yo, good I time. Say, especially with communities, bro. Especially if you got some people you can find with, go do that shit, bro. My, oh, my bad stuff. I'm supposed to not be cussing my first little bit. Go do that stuff, bro. You know what I mean? It's good for y'all. We don't have communities like this. I don't, we do, but you don't hear about them a lot. Everybody trying to do their own thing. Everybody worry about themselves. But, bruh, come on, bro. Do some bonding. Enjoy humanity. What was that? But when Simone became a teenager and was too old to be a camp attendee, she decided she would volunteer and be a camp counselor. Uh, and she found it was awesome. Well, we she immediately no connected with the other camp counselors and she felt all grown up having a real job and she loved goofing around with all of the kids. And so every summer since that first time volunteering, Simone had gone back and volunteered again. And this summer was no different. So in mid-July of that year, Simone packed up her things and she headed off to the forest. The way this camp worked was the 200 plus kids that were attending the camp, they would get dropped off in the mornings each day by their crazy. parents and they'd play and run around all day. And then and in the- All y'all that do these camps and being teachers and anybody that do the children, y'all got it, y'all got it. I could not do it, bro. I could not do it, bro. I could not do it. I could not do it. I could not do it. I would just get annoyed. I couldn't do it. I can't even do it with human, like, not not like that. I can't even do it with adults. I, like, I can barely do it with adults. Like, they got adults out here be acting dummy. I can't act. I couldn't be around kids that I know that are still mentally developing, acting crazy. I'm trying to chill. I'm trying to chill. I'll do it with my own kids when I have my kids. But other than that, I'm not trying to watch anybody else's kids having them out here acting wild and all that late afternoon, their parents would come back and pick them up. So none of the kids were sleeping over at the camp during these two weeks. However, the 30 plus Wait, counselor- on, 
They weren't sleeping at the camp. The way this camp worked was the 200 plus kids that were attending the camp, they would get dropped off in the mornings each day by their parents and they'd play and run around all day. And then in the late afternoon, their parents would come back and pick them up. So, Fuck, no, nigga. nigga, that is not camp, boy. That is daycare, boy. Y'all call that camp because you got 200 plus. That is daycare, boy. You did not drop me off to camp. And we did no such thing of camping. If you camping in the middle of the day, yo, go at night. That's the real camping. The overnight, we're camping, we're staying here, we're... Bro, no, hold on. Let me just, maybe I'm geeking. It might be just like staying in one spot for a period of long. For uh, a long time period. The activity of spending a vacation living in a camp tent or camper. Camp attracts people of all. Yo, that's what I'm saying, bro. You didn't even stay. You didn't even stay nothing, bro. Y'all talking about having activities. Bro, that's not camping, bro. That is daycare, bro. What are you talking about? None of the kids were sleeping over at the camp. That's during these two weeks daycare, however boy. the 30 plus counselors they would just stay at the camp for the full two weeks they would just sleep in tents out in the forest they technically the reason they did this was to make sure they had enough time in the morning to prep the campgrounds for the kids and then also in the evenings to have enough time to clean up and kind of have it ready oh, for the doing, next day though. but in reality simone and the other counselors all knew that the camping out in the forest was the best part of the volunteer experience after all the kids went home for the night all of the counselors would finish up all of their duties and then rush off into the forest where their tents were and where there was a fire pit and they would have some lit. beers and wine because well we know where this is gonna go it's called thorns say my first rodeo this ain't your first rodeo if it's not your first time here you know what I mean we already know what's going on they in the woods bro you're in the woods if you're in the woods you better have you a flashlight if you're in the woods you better have you a defense mechanism if you're in the woods you better know where you at young you better know where you at, young. And you better have them flashlights on that crazy and them defense mechanisms on crazy and be ready to go on crazy at any time. Have some fun, but don't have too much fun to worry in. You, you can't even defend yourself. The legal drinking age in Germany is actually 16, so all these counts... Oh, yeah, I forgot in Germany they can go crazy at 16, they wild, and they... And they be like... <laughs> if I... I don't drink, but... Others are having a couple of drinks, and then before long, <coughs> they'll be laughing and <coughs> telling stories, anybody. and just generally wow. having a great time. So, that July in 2012, Simone and the other counselors arrived at the campgrounds a day early, and they caught up with each other and they prepared the campground, and then the next morning, all the kids showed up, and everything went off without a hitch. And then that afternoon, after all the kids had been picked up by their parents, Simone and the other counselors rushed to finish up all their duties, and then headed off into the woods to enjoy their first night hanging out together. After a couple of beers so had been be passed around the campfire, everybody was in good spirits, and laughing well, and telling stories, but pretty quickly people happens. started to fade and get tired because, you know, it was their first day back at camp and it had been a long, tiring day. And so people very gradually began retiring to their tents to go to bed. And eventually Simone too had crawled into her tent and gotten onto her cot to try to sleep herself. But she found that night it was so hot she couldn't be in her tent. It was stifling inside of there. And so she decides she's just going to sleep out in the open where it's a little bit cooler. And so she she picks up her fold-up cot and she brings it out into the open and she sees there are several other counselors who have done the same thing. And so she puts her cot down next to one of her good friends who's already asleep in her cot. And then Simone climbs into her cot, she gets under her covers and she tries to fall asleep. But for the next hour, Simone just tosses and turns, she can't get comfortable. And by that time, everybody else has completely passed out. So it's just her, you know, she's counting down the time until she has to get up again to start the next day. And so she's getting stressed about that but eventually she would fall asleep. However, she would immediately be thrust into one of the most visceral and intense nightmares she had ever had in her entire life. 
in her dream, she opens her eyes and she looks out in front of her and it's this desert city and there are hundreds of people all in front of her just standing there looking up at her. And then she notices on her left and on her right are these two men, these big huge men that are both working on something behind her. She doesn't really know what it is, but they're obviously busy doing something. And she kind of glances up at one of them and she notices he's holding something that looks like a wreath, like a holiday wreath you would hang on your door. And so Simone <coughs> looks away from the guy with the wreath and just looks back out at this huge sea of people, which is totally bizarre because no one's moving, no one's making any sound, they're just staring at her. And then she feels this shooting pain in the top of her head. The man who was standing on her right was not holding a holiday wreath. He was holding a crown of thorns. And now he, along with the guy on the other side of her, were working together to press this crown of thorns into her head. And so Simone is feeling the thorns being pressed deeper and deeper into her scalp. Hey man, if this, hey man, hey man, I don't know, I don't know. That dream stuff is really weird, but I'll be telling people, bro. I don't know, I don't know. I'll be fighting back my dreams. I, I really can't tell you, like, I don't wish nobody to have nightmares or anything, but I can't tell you last time I had a nightmare. Um, cause I'll be fighting back my dreams. And I'll be like, yo, I'll be telling people, yo, you control your dreams, it's all in your head and shit like that. Cause last time I had a nightmare, I was had a nightmare, then that nightmare popped up again, but this time I was like, hey, yo, like, I'm not going like that. So, like, when that nigga, when he pulled up, I was like, I'm on your head now. You was coming for me, I'm on your head now, boy. I, boy, boy, I wasn't even worried. I wasn't even worried. That's why I be saying. I don't even be worried about my head. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really can't explain, but that, that dream stuff be weird. But, yo, you got to fight back. If I was in my dream and I saw 100 people in front of me and two, two men sh near me, I'm like, what is this? Change scenery. Ugh. Ugh. That's what I'm saying. I just be like, change that. Or I be like, let me kill the young. Like, oh, in GTA. Let me get this man's out of here. Let me get this man's out of here. You're not doing me like, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, uh, uh. Get off me. Uh, uh. But that's, it's weird. Everybody's different. You know what I mean, you can't be afraid. Don't be afraid of your dreams. If you're afraid of your dreams, you know what I mean? I don't know, but not being afraid of hurt can sometimes just get you in done dirty if it's like a uh, spirit or something. Well, if I get done dirty trying to fight, fight the spirit. This guy, yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not going like that. I'm not going. You're in my head. I'm not going like that. Especially if you're trying two big schmens on me trying to put a thorn on my head. Boy, get off my head, boy. Get off my head, boy. Get off my head, boy. Off my head, boy. boy, I'm going to spawn. I'm going to spawn the, the brute on me. The, oh my god. Let me see what she does. And she tries to fight them off, but she, there's no trying them. I'm doing she it. She realizes she can't move. She can't even turn her head. Oh, she got that sleep paralysis stuff. If you got sleep paralysis stuff, that's different. That's different. I've had it like once or twice. You know what I mean? And I ain't gonna cap. I think it's just once. I don't think it was once, but I think it was once. But yeah, different. I was really, really young. That was when I couldn't control the dreams. Since I'm out here controlling the dreams and stuff like that, Danny, like, no, he ain't want no problem with him. I'm like, you don't want no problem. Had to look at them. She can only see them out of her periphery vision. And then she tries to scream out for help to someone in the crowd to come help her. But when she opens see, her mouth, no sound. That's what I'm talking about. You see that, bro? You see, it's like, it's maybe because I'm taking, I'm, I'm taking action. I'm, I'm not waiting for any, I'm not waiting for nobody. So I'm like, help. You are your help. That's what I'm saying. You are your help. Stop asking everybody else for help and look at yourself. Smack that nigga. <laughs> out and so as she's sitting there the all she can do is that. stare straight out ahead Bro, of her as the pressure of these thorns the are driven deeper and deeper into her skin and then at some point Dude, blood begins skin. dripping down in front of her eyes and around that point the pain became so blinding so awful that it woke her up and as soon as she woke up she shot up and she reached for her head to oh, make sure there was no crown of she thorns on her and as she's doing that she she's thinking okay phew it was just a dream that was just a horrible See, dream like, in this forest they, in, they even ate in the forest i would have me a knife or something bro i would have, been, I would have got up like this in defense mode, boy, I would have got him in defense mode. I'm good, I'm safe. And as she's kind of patting on her head, she's realizing her head is wet. And as she's touching her head, she's real. How you, yo? Realizing it hurts, there's a... 
yo, did she really get that stinging door? pain in her head? And then she realizes it's not just a stinging pain. It's a throbbing, intense pain all over her head. And so as she's kind of having this realization that her dream is now kind of segued into her people, real life, right? she looks That's out ahead people. of her and she sees off in the distance in the tree line, something is running through the woods. She can't tell who or what it is, but she makes a mental note that there is something, someone running away from them. But this pain in her head has gotten so intense that she can't focus on anything else. She can only focus on the pain. And as she's thinking about how much her head hurts, she screams in pain. And the girl who was laying next to her that had been asleep, she wakes up to the sound of the scream, but it's totally pitch black. She has no idea what's going on with Simone. And so this girl, she sits up and she's trying to get Simone to tell her what's going on, but Simone has no idea. She's totally frantic. She can't really make sense of what's happening. And so this friend, she reaches down and she picks Thank up a God, flashlight, I'm about to like, she what a turns flashlight it on, say. and she aims the light at Simone, illuminating her head. And when this friend sees Simone's head, she what starts to scream. Is... Seconds later, the rest of the- I'm getting tired of this screaming, bro. What is, I'm getting tired of this screaming, bro. Look, let me tell y'all right now, when something tragic happens, don't scream. What, screaming ain't gonna do nothing, bro. You better. And let's like, let me rephrase that, bro. In this situation, like, if you like, I'm not even gonna explain. Screaming can help, but in this situation, I guess, bro. I guess I don't know. It's, it might be because I'm a male, bro. But I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm like, damn. I don't even know. I'm like, if my woke up, he's like, ah, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, ugh. I'm like, ugh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm like, ugh. I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, oh shit! Oh! Got the rap. Would've woke my mans up. I'm like, yo! Been yelling all that. Counselors that have been but sleeping just, out were awake, know, bro, and I'd they were rushing Simone, who was now shaking and vomiting, know, bro, over got, to one of the staff I need vans. To know what's and then 15 and minutes later, they had driven her to oh, the no, emergency room. It would turn out, minutes, after Simone had finally howdy. fallen asleep, and she began having that really intense dream about a crown of thorns being dug into her scalp. Well, in reality, something was digging into her scalp, and it was kind of manifesting itself in her dream. And what was Yo. digging... In telling me an animal pulled up on her and tried to eat her? Into her scalp was the jaws of a fox. What'd I say? Fox. This What'd fox say? had snuck into the campsite and walked right up behind Simone and just started eating her head. And amazingly, it did not wake Simone up right away. And so this fox got 20 or so serious bites out of Simone's head before she shot up and scared it away. And so almost certainly what Simone saw running away from her in that quick moment was the fox. Bro, that's what I'm saying. I'm not. Is it cause she was drinking? I'm not even trying to blame drinking, bro. I'm not even trying to blame it, bro. If it was cause she drinking, bro, don't be drinking out there. I don't even know, bro. But 20 good bites when you eat. Doctors were able to save Simone and stitch her head back bro. together. And they were even able to hide all of the scars he in her hair lines. You can't even see them. But despite her being physically all. okay today, psychologically, this was a very traumatizing event. Not only does she refuse now to go into any forest, whether it's day or night, but she also periodically still gets phantom yeah, pains in her scalp. It feels like the fox and is biting fox her head all over again. Up and just bite your whole nose. So that's going to do it, guys. Guys, if you got something, Bro, the odds of that is not even like high. Like you chilling in a tent, he pulls up. He's like, ah. he didn't even pull up inside the tent. On the outside, he perfectly has you and all. Like what? I feel. Look, at least she's good. We ain't got no RPs in this joint. At least she's good. You know what I mean? Everything was legal. Everything was done right. Not like they did anything wrong. They just she just literally went to sleep in. That man's like, I'm gonna get. But yeah, let me know what y'all thoughts are. See, you see, it's end of the video. See what I mean? You know what that means. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, hit the like button and tell me why. Other than that, drop the joint. We out, y'all. Deuces.